dancers. We're called the Seven Champions, named after the Seven Champions of Christendom, because when we very first started back in 1977, we started with something called a mama's play, a traditional play, and it was called the Seven Champions of Christendom. We then started our dancing careers, as it were, and didn't have a name. People started calling us the Seven Champions, and it stuck. So the next thing is, what is molly dancing? Many of you may be familiar, or vaguely familiar, with Morris dancing. And Morris dancing typically, in its most common form, has handkerchiefs and bells and sort of skipping up and down like this, or maybe a bit more energetically. Molly dancing is an obscure form of Morris dancing that originated in East Anglia, and it's much more down to work, hobnail boots and stompy like this, and lots of energy. And I started doing this when the Seven Champions were formed, because I was fool enough to have friends who became Morris dancers, and then started another team and said, would I like to join? And I asked the question, as somebody who had never danced before, what is the purpose of this team? And I was told, we're going to be the best team in the country. Right, I said, I will join. And for the last 42 years, we have been aspiring to be the best <laughs> team in the country. How you measure these things is challenging, but what we have achieved as a team, we have danced at festivals up and down the country, we have an extremely good reputation in the folk world, we are renowned in many areas and completely unknown by the normal population of course. This team started as a group of 20-somethings and myself as 17 as the youngest. 42 years on, there's plenty of us in our late 50s, early 60s. We are an ageing team. We do have people of 20-something, 30s, but a number of us are 60 or approaching 60. And that's not going to give us longevity. So that's one of the challenges the team faces. Another one is, although we are flourishing in many ways, we have a great camaraderie, we still have energy, we have precision, we've got some fantastic dances, but practices, often there's only six or seven people when we could do with ten or a dozen people. We need more local dancers. We are known up and down the country, as I mentioned, and we have people come down from Warwick and Portsmouth, a number of different places to a monthly practice, but we need a stronger core. So those are problems facing the team. And this project, this high performance leadership project, I thought would be ideal to try and tackle these projects. So my vision, if you cast yourself forwards, go to speak later, Bill. Cast yourself forwards to 2060. I am an old man of 100. And <coughs> the highlight of my year is seeing my old team, the Seven Champions, perform. I stopped dancing 25 years earlier. And this team now, they're younger than when I was there. They're most of them in their 20s and 30s. And there's more of them. There's 15, 16 of them. But what impresses me most is the sheer precision and energy that they have, the theatre they bring to the performance. In my days in that team, they aspired to be as good as they could be. And they were good. We were good. Very good. But this team now, they have met all of the aspirations that I had to be the very, very best. And it warms my heart as a 100-year-old man. So the vision is how to take the team we have now so that it is still flourishing in 40 years' time. And to do that, one of the things the project states is to have a mission statement. And so I have developed a mission statement. This may get changed with my action committee, but the mission statement, as it stands at the moment, is to develop a shared vision, values, and <coughs> goals. And to begin building a strong, vibrant, and lasting future through recruitment, retention, 
deputising and succession. So let's unpack that because there's quite a lot in there. We've got to all be singing from the same hymn sheet. We already have that to a fair extent, but it's not been formalised. We all have to have a really exciting vision for the future of the team and understand that to take that team forward, we've got to be vibrant, we've got to be attractive to new people who may want to join us. And new people need to understand that vision, our sense of values and the goals that we're aiming towards. To begin building a strong team, we need, of course, recruitment, like any Toastmasters club. We need to have good numbers. But we've got to keep them. It's no good them just turning up. Retention, we want to keep them. Deputising. Nobody is indispensable, including myself. At the moment, I am somewhat indispensable to the team, so I've got to find a way that I can be replaced and anybody in the team can be replaced. And then succession. None of us is immortal, apart from perhaps, no, not even me. So we're going to have to have younger people if we're going to be flourishing in 40 years' time. So that's the vision. I have a set of values that we're going to share with the Action Committee to do with everybody is equal in the team, regardless of age, experience. It's a male team. We have female singers, but we also have a sister team as well. So regardless of age, gender, experience, we're all equal. Every contribution is welcome, even if not adopted. Constructive feedback, as in Toastmasters, is welcome. Negative criticism, criticism isn't. Our next step is to convene the action committee any day soon. I have six people ready. That's where I've got to. I do apologise, but here they are, coming up now. And while these are circulating, uh, while these are circulating, I'll share with you a little story. I, I spent six years in Scotland, and the Scots are very patriotic. And when they support football teams or rugby teams, they support two teams. They support Scotland, or anyone else playing England. And I, during the rugby, I got sent a lovely picture of some Morris dancers doing their stuff. Just reminding me. And the caption underneath was.